Hey, Vsauce here. Where are your fingers? Sorry about that, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Welcome back to this gorgeous simulator. I had requests from many people to revisit this because they were fascinated by it. As much as I was. Maybe even more. Which is, um, that's up there. <laughs> First off, I'd like to say that I got some of the info wrong about, um, certain things last time. Sagittarius A is not a galaxy, it is a black hole. But I suppose technically it is a galaxy because without a black hole, a galaxy won't exist. So I'm kind of half right, kind of half wrong. But anyway, on top of that, this is going to be very interesting. The biggest star we've ever found is actually not VY Canis Majoris. It is actually, hang on a minute, let me see if I can find it. All right, I'm going to do this thing again, hang on. Here's us. We're so little. VY Canis Majoris, which is the star that I spoke about last time. Put that right there. Uh, Earth's now on fire. I think. Actually, what? Are we in the right zones? Let me have a look. We're probably no... Oh. Oh! <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble. <laughs> I probably should have put it further away. That's okay. Uh, it'll just be here for a second. Oh, God. Oh, oh god. Oh, I'm so sorry. 61 degrees, 107 degrees. The whole earth is boiling. Ah, crisp winter's day. It is just dwarfed by this massive, massive, massive star. Let's see, 987,610,000 Ks. So, that's huge. But it is not, in fact, the biggest. This is the biggest. Say hello to UY Scooty or Scutty. Not entirely sure how to pronounce it. But, uh, it's even bigger. Probably a lot bigger, actually. <laughs> 1 billion, 187 million, 914 thousand kilometers across. Holy Jesus, that's huge. I have no idea where this star is, how far away from us it is, but, um, oh god, it's massive. So massive, I think, that if we were to launch VY Canis Majoris into it, it would cause one hell of a supernova, I think. Okay, I'm going to a few years per second. This, oh god, this is going to be massive. Hang on, let me, let me turn this up. Okay. Oh! <laughs> yep. There it goes. <laughs> oh. Oh, this one didn't actually even touch them. <laughs> so remember, dear children, don't collide stars into each other. Shit happens. Earth was but a drop of petroleum in this raging engine. And it has been used. Goodbye, everything we have stood for. I want to go back to this. I love, 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 love watching this. What, what are you doing? Where, where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Just having a cuddle. Got the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy. Oh. I was wrong last time as well. Um, what I said before about all the planets and solar systems and nebulas and everything smashing into each other. I forgot about the scale of everything here. This is almost immeasurably massive. The black hole right there is already huge. It's like physically tiny in comparison to the galaxy. It's a lot heavier and that's why everything revolves around it, but it is so small. So let's go kilometers. Okay. That's big. What I said before, you got, if you've got to use E to measure something, it's huge. When the two black holes, which is actually going to happen a very, very long time from now, I don't even know if humans will still look like humans, or if we'll still exist by then, but when these two black holes collide, it will just form a new galaxy. Because of the spacings, like every tiny little dot of light could potentially have millions of stars in them, and of those millions of stars, they could each have um, unique solar systems and whatnot. So we're, there's a lot of space in between those tiny little specks, and it's very unlikely that there'll be many collisions, if at all. 
So, uh, if we're still alive to witness this happening, um, perhaps we don't have to worry so much. Maybe. I mean, all it takes is one little speck traveling very quickly to hit us and we're dead, but... Yeah. Optimism. Planets, exoplanets, historical, historical. Ah, historical. Okay. Not sure how many of you have heard of the Voyager spacecrafts. There's two of them. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. They were launched in the late 70s, 1977. Um, I think the second one was launched before the first, I think? But only a couple of weeks separated them. Um, Voyager 1 is the furthest thing away from planet Earth that we have ever launched into space. Let me see if I can find it. Voyager 1 and 2 plus solar system in 2017. This is going to be interesting. Oh my god. Let me turn the wall. Wow. That's a long, 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 <laughs> incredibly long way away. Oh my lord. That's incredible. The furthest we've ever been with anything that we've... Well done. I wish there was some way to measure this. Hang on, let me turn on the grid. Yeah, we have to measure it in AUs. That's how far away we are. Ah. Okay, distance to strongest attractor. We have, let's go in kilometers. 2.07 E plus 10 kilometers away. I don't know what that means, but there's an E in there. So it's fucking far away <laughs> in AUs. I think one AU is the distance between planet Earth and the sun. That's one. This is 139 AUs and counting. That is incredible. That is ridiculously far away. Even Voyager 2 is really, really far away. And, and very, very dark and very lonely. My god. That's awesome. I believe these two thingies were thrown into space so they could orbit these outer planets like Jupiter and Saturn and whatnot. But obviously they wouldn't stay there forever because NASA wanted to see how far they could throw them into interstellar space. And, uh, well, they did just that. And uh, I don't know when the last transmission one of any of these made back to Earth. It would take so, so long to receive any transmission from one of these things. It'd take probably... I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to guess the time it would take, but I could only imagine it'd be very long. I can barely see Earth from back here. That's just how far away that it is from there. Well done, NASA. Well, well fucking done. This is incredible. We get some sunlight. Oh my god. <laughs> we get something. <sighs> I read up a lot about both of these, actually, Voyager 1 and 2, and both of them have all sorts of memorabilia from planet Earth. Like, there's a record with certain sounds from Earth, and, like, people talking, animals doing their thing, just, just all sorts of different sounds. I think that's it there, actually, that little circle. I could be very wrong. They did call it the Golden Record, and there's a little plaque on it that says, um, Hey, this is from the United States people, and we live on planet Earth. Just so you know, if, if anyone ever finds this thing, uh, and, and you're smart enough to read and uh, pl <laughs> figure out a way how to play this record. Um, yeah. Hi. <laughs> we sent this. That's so cool. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm using cool again. I just, there's no better word for it. I'm mesmerized by that. So yeah, if um, it's heading. Do we have a heading? Yes, we're going this way. What's out here? Whole uh, nothing. 
Yeah, I hope you find something. I hope someone finds you. Voyager 1 flyby of Jupiter. Hi. <laughs> just just come for a visit, you know. It's going I'm just I just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go. We are very close right now. That's very close. Distance from host, 356,000 kilometers. We're closing in. Closing in. 348,000 Ks away from Jupiter. In space terms, that's very close. Close enough to get sucked into its orbit. But we're traveling. Oh, goodness, that's very close to the moon there. Careful. Wow, that's close. You better have turned this fucking thing around and got a photo of this. Aww. Oh. Well done, people. Well done. Just imagine the timing of it. That'd be the most difficult thing to figure out because you have to get the orbit of the spacecraft just right and time it perfectly with Jupiter. And you only have a guess as to whether or not you're going to make it. And this thing could have easily just plowed straight into Jupiter and never be seen again. All that money and all that time spent working on it, gone. But no, they fucking nailed it because they're brilliant. They're so smart. Voyager 1 and Saturn in 1980, one year later. Here we are. Whoa! What was that? What was that? Titan. We nearly got tightened. Oh. Our two gas giants. Very fascinating planets. I really wonder what the surface of Saturn or Jupiter would look like. Probably not much. If the entire thing is made of gas and liquid, then it'll be a pretty dreary place to live. Neptune with Voyager 2. And slow that down. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, yay. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Wow, you're flying very close. My god, that's close. NASA, you got some balls. How close are we right now? Distance to host, 41,000 Ks. <laughs> that's nothing. That's nothing. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I, I fell silent there. That was... That was beautiful. Okay, we're in 2470. Climb me up at 10 years per second. This thing probably doesn't even run anymore. Assuming it has similar methods of powering itself, like, um, New Horizons. The plutonium has definitely, uh, its half-life is over. It, it doesn't glow anymore. This thing is very, very dead. <laughs> but I suppose it'll just keep going for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years before either something collects it, be it an asteroid or intelligent life form. Who knows? Or maybe it'll just keep drifting forever and because of the chances of life even happening, it'll never be seen. Ever. But there's only one way to find out, isn't there? And that's just... do it. <gasps> Scale tour! Oh, this is what I was looking for last time! Okay, okay. Right. I'm gonna scale how tiny we are much, much better this time. Here's our moon. Here's Mars. Here's Earth. Here's Saturn with a paper disc is Jupiter Proxima Centauri small star very small here's our Sun we can barely see Earth down there just barely we got Sirius a very hot star 
here. Oh my god, we've got Arcturus. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'm gonna butcher all these names because they're not even English. Rigel or Rigel? Earth is just gone now. Beetlejuice. V. Y. Canis Majoris. And we're missing one. The big boy. The big, big boy. U. V. Scutty. Or Scooty. I don't know. That's how tiny we are. That is how tiny and insignificant planet Earth is. I'm sorry if that gives you an existential crisis, but to me, it actually makes me smile. We're the only planet, as far as we're aware, that has any form of life on it. Because our planet is so perfect. It has a molten iron core that's spinning and creating a magnetic field. It has a lot of water on it, plenty to sustain life. It's sitting at the perfect distance from the sun, nice and warm. It's even angled perfectly, like its axis of which it spins is perfect. Our moon, our tidally locked little friend there, is massive. And it's not only a shield for Earth, because there's a lot of asteroids that have hit the moon and not us, but it also is constantly shifting around our water. There's an abundance of materials on Earth as well. And again, as far as I'm, as far as I know, we're the only ones out here for a very, 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 <laughs> very long time. You see, even Kepler, Kepler 186 system with Earth-like planet. No, they're all too hot. Oh, water. You don't mean this one, do you? No, they're all water. They're too far away. What about you? You're 100% silicate. Life likelihood, very unlikely. Life likelihood, zero. No hydrogen, no water. 85% silicates, 14% iron. And it's a solid. Fuck. Good Tokyo Drift meme. But anyway, I needn't press on if I have nothing else to do. The rest of this sim is basically a lot of physics tests, like crashing things into Earth, or crashing the sun into itself, or, you know, things like that. Like a hundred moons hitting Earth. So, yeah. I think that's all the super fascinating things I have to show you for this episode. I don't know whether I'll revisit this or not, um, because I don't want to force any of my content. That's probably why the biggest reason I upload very slowly is because it takes a while for me to have an idea. But when I have an idea, I, I think it's a good one. And um, I, I don't want to oversaturate you guys with stuff. Even if there is a slight urgency to get things done. But anyhow, farewell from this strange green and brown lump on the ground here. you guys later. We're gonna, we're gonna see Earth just fading into nothingness once more. We're very tiny, but we're also very lucky. Never forget that.